Hello, I'm Thomas Gruelers. And I'm Katrina Unit. <laughs> and uh, today is your third of your three picks. We've uh, done two films that I very much enjoy and uh, thoroughly enjoyed again on a rewatch. Uh, I'm, I, actually, that might be a lie because we haven't recorded Stardust yet. Mm. So, but I don't think I, 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 oh, I, I loved lo- it. I loved I it as a Stardust child. So much. <laughs> I, I watch every now and again. It is, it's one of my big comfort films, is Stardust, but this mm. isn't about Stardust. No, it's not about Stardust. This isn't about Stardust. <laughs> uh, watch that's... the other episode if you want to hear my thoughts on Stardust. That sounds like a, 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 a deleted line from uh, the marriage story argument. Like halfway through where they start just stop listening to each other and they just start <laughs> saying their own thing. Um, <laughs> and then the best, the culmination of that, what does that have to do about LA? God, what a great... Do you like Mary's story, Katrina? No, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I hate Adam Driver so much. Do you? What? Oh, I did know this. I did his know face, this. His face makes me intensely uncomfortable. Sorry to any Adam Driver fangirls out there, all fanboys. Um, personally, I think his face... I, you know, I don't think he's ugly. I just personally, it makes me physically uncomfortable to look at. <laughs> I don't think he's ugly. It just makes me physically uncomfortable. <laughs> so great, great sentence. I don't think he's ugly. I just think personally he's grotesque. <laughs> um, I was going to say speaking of the grotesque, but that doesn't really work. Um, your third pick is our first animation, if you don't include stop motion. I don't know why you wouldn't, but uh, we've done two stop motions. And now we are doing our first animation. Uh, first it's our first anime. Is it your first anime ever? Actual... As in, like on the podcast? Is it your? Well, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because we did. We've done Chicken Run and Fant- Chicken Run, my favorite anime. <laughs> Chicken Run, great. <laughs> Love that anime. <laughs> Run and Fantastic Mr. Fox, uh, and that's it for animation. Full stop. Really. Mm. Um. So that's that's it really. Uh, which leads us into why don't you, why don't you uh, introduce your third pick? Um, so my third pick is um, the studio Ghibli or Ghibli, depending on how you personally pronounce it. I say Ghibli. I don't know why. I thought anyway. it said Studio Ghibli. I've heard that once. Am I? Well, I say Ghibli, but I'm pretty sure it might be Ghibli. So. We'll use them probably interchangeably. It's um, a Miyazaki-directed film. Um, who di- He directs a lot of the big ones. We're talking Spirited Away, Ponyo, Laputa, Castle in the Sky, um, Kiki's Delivery Service. He, he's the, the most famous Studio Ghibli Ghibli director. Um, and it's Howl's Moving Castle. From master filmmaker Hayao Miyazaki, the director of the Academy Award-winning Spirited Away. That is ancient sorcery, and quite powerful too. This summer, experience the epic tale of a young woman transformed by a mysterious curse. No, that's really me, isn't it? An enchanted moving castle. This is a magic house. And the one wizard powerful enough. And it's based off of the Welsh book series of the same name. Mm. Um, In my opinion, this is my favourite. I think we'll get into that a bit later on why it's my personal favourite. But if we're going to talk like childhood favourites, mm. the first ever, um, oh, Totoro, by the way, that's the big, that's the big one that everyone knows of Miyazaki is My Neighbour Totoro. My wouldn't, two you say, childhood... wouldn't you say Spirited Away? I, th- I feel people, I think if you said Spirited Away, people would know. No, 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 yes. But I 
think about where Totoro is. If you see a photo of Hayao yeah. Totoro, everyone knows Totoro. They don't know his name, but they know they've seen it. They know Totoro. But That's, my, that, is that fun to say? I love saying Totoro, <laughs> uh, but my personal childhood favorite was Ponyo, and that was the first ever Studio Ghibli film I saw. Um, and it's, I mean, it's got Frankie Jonas in it. So, of course, I loved Ponyo as a kid. I loved the Jonas Brothers. They've never really... Have Disney Plus put that on Disney Plus yet? The jo- what was the Jonas show Jonas. Called? It was just called was Jonas. It just, I thought it was, yeah. I mean, I tell you what, I love that show so much. Frankie Jonas, of course, <laughs> of course, is the bonus Jonas. He's the fourth younger brother of the Jonas Brothers. He's in Ponyo. To set her free, this charm will guarantee your safe return. Walt Disney Studios presents a Studio Ghibli production of a Hayao Miyazaki film. Hold on. This June, journey to amazing new worlds. Find me in the future! Aboard Howl's Moving Castle. I would like to say that I specifically chose House Moving Castle as well mm. for the podcast because I thought that Tom would appreciate the English voice actors. <laughs> well, um, I did. I um, I listened to it because uh, I've always been subs over dub sky as my um, as my grandma has joined me in that opinion, not with anime, but with um, uh, the foreign BBC Four dramas that she watches. Uh, she uh, has she seen the bridge? Oh, she's seen everything. She's the bridge literally... is good. The bridge is really good. Yeah, it is very good. Did you like the tunnel? No, I didn't no. watch the tunnel. Is it similar? Is it like basically? It's the, the same. same no, it was a it was a remake, oh. uh, an English remake, but it was also French. So, but basically, instead oh, the of the channel it... tunnel. <laughs> well, yes, it was the channel tunnel, because obviously, for those who don't know, uh, the bridge was a series where it was. Um, was it sewn together the body, or was it? It was, um, it was in the just middle. placed together, and it was yeah. was it Norway and Sweden, and yeah. on the Swedish side it was a, a Norway, the top half of the Norway mm. woman, and on the Norwegian side it was the bottom half of the Swedish woman. So the two police they had to work together. It was brilliant. Uh, I never it's, actually watched the last episode, so uh, no. it's the most <laughs> it's the most high concept buddy cop. <laughs> It's not a body yeah, cop, it's, it's very dark. <laughs> brilliant, it's very different to Howl's Moving Castle, but... Very different. <laughs> uh, and then they made it, and then they remade it for Sky, one of Sky original, um, and it was the tunnel, and they were like, what if, instead of, what if instead of Norway in Sweden, it was the middle of the Channel Tunnel, and it was an English detective and a French detective. Um, and it was her from um, Harry Potter, who's also the love interest in Bruges, and she's one of the Goblet of Fire contestants Fleur Delacour Emma Watson that's it and uh, <laughs> no it was no it's, it's Fleur whoever plays Fleur Delacour she's also in Tenet oh yes she is and I thought she was going to be in more <laughs> that she wasn't yeah I was good I was a bit like <laughs> oh okay however I was very happy with Elizabeth Debicki for me Tenet is the Elizabeth Debicki show I would have much rather um but this that. isn't about Tenet <laughs> no it's not about Tenet it's about How's Moving Castle uh, the what whole point think? of the what yes, I was think? just going to say the whole point of the three pick series is that uh, I don't get a say. Usually, usually I say, well, uh, yeah, that would be interesting to do. Usually, people send a list of ten or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, how's Moving Castle? <sighs> I was so in on the first hour, mm-hmm. and for me kind of lost its way a little so interesting Hmm. are you the opposite no i just like the entire film oh (laughs) um i watched it i I did as soon as i saw that uh, billy crystal (laughs) was the voice of (laughs) chalicer calcifer uh, calcifer um i i was like oh great and so i watched the whole thing in uh in japanese and then i rewatched certain scenes with (laughs) just uh, with the uh certain cast I can't um, believe you would miss out on Gene Simmons and uh, Emily uh, Mortimer, Christian Bale, Christian Bale, Lauren I just, Bacall. I thought I thought you'd be happy with uh, Gene Simmons. Never mind uh, everyone else. 
Gene Simmons plays old Sophie. Yes, she does. It was her last role. I think it was a good one, if anything. It was a good one. Oh, do you, so do you listen to the American cast? Well, that, personally, here's a bit of a thing about me. I don't, I necessarily have the, um, the kind of focus to watch um, ah. things in foreign languages. I have to be in a very specific mood. And as well, when I first saw these films, it was a Channel 4, like, omnibus of just Studio Ghibli films. And I watched them with my, with my grandfather. Mm. Um, who first introduced me to Studio Ghibli. Um, well, no, first introduced me to the concept of Studio Ghibli. I'd seen Ponyo years before. Um, Not knowing what love, it was. From a love film. Um, do you remember love films? They I do remember love you, films. They used to send you DVDs and you used to watch them. So, well, um, if you ask my mum, she fucking hates Ponyo because um, I just wanted to watch it all the goddamn time. That and The Princess and the Frog, I was genuinely obsessed with because that's what I'm like as a person, I get very obsessive over specific things. You're but, not a Florida person. Are you considering a Florida trip now that uh, Splash Mountain's going to be Princess and the Frog? Um, I'm not. I mean, I'm not. I'm. I don't know if that would be my first place to go in America. I've never been. Oh. I don't know. I think my first point of call would be like New York. New York's pretty good, but Florida's great. Florida's better. Also um, my crazy, also my weird, like, I don't know, North Carolina. <laughs> hey, I'm just going on a trip to Delaware for a while. It, it would be weird if you were this huge Princess and the Frog fan, and instead of going to actual New Orleans, you went to the Splash Mountain uh, covered <laughs> <laughs> cover ride. Yeah, can you imagine? But, um, yes. yeah, so my granddad, and, she, and because it was on Channel 4, well, well Film 4, rather, mm-hmm. I should say, it, they were all the English dubs, so oh. I have basically only seen a lot of Studio Ghibli films in the English, and so you watch it in one way, and then kind yeah. of trying to watch it as another way. I, I just, especially in this film, I think the English cast is impeccable, yeah. Yeah. Is, is truly, truly an example of great anime like you know some of these anime dubs i used to be a bit of an anime fan back in the mm-hmm. back in 2014 and 15 crunchy roll was my jam um and the english dubs were a bit mm, lackluster but studio ghibli knows what they're doing they pay mm. some pretty hefty prices i'm assuming to get joss hutchison yes Marvel. and also well i don't know the salaries but I presume that the salaries were cut down a bit because two of my fun facts, Lauren Bacall, who I adore, I've always, uh, obviously, Humphrey Bogart, uh, married to Humphrey Bogart, they made a bunch of terrific films. And then she sort of moved into independent movies. She's great in Dogville, a Nicole Kidman, Lars von Trier movie. She's great in Birth, another Nicole Kidman movie. Um, mm-hmm. Great. I love, um, love Birth. Very good movie. Um, but... Um, Basically, Lauren Bacall was just a huge fan of Miyazaki. And um, Christine Bale was a huge fan of Spirited Away. I think that Miyazaki, I mean, regardless of your opinions of cartoons or of this film in particular, Mm. he is one of the best. Truly, like, marvellous director. Directorial wise. This this film, regardless of what you think of the story, the acting, anything, oh my God, how gorgeous is this film? Tremendous. To look at. Visually, it is such a beautiful film. Mm. I was I was watching um, a video on it, yes, on um, House Moving Castle, uh, Castle yesterday, um, where they the YouTube commentator said was speaking about how all the background shots were like done by hand and then scanned into mm. the computer and then digitally retouched, just so that every and like every single scene. You could spend hours looking at some of these, especially oh. one of the ones in the castle. The uh, the level of detail is insane. It's like the the nineties uh, Disney Renaissance was that amalgam of two D animation and three D digital animation. Yeah, and, especially um, yeah. here's a weird one. I think a lot of people forget about is um, Treasure Planet. Treasure oh, Planet. Yes. An absolute pioneer. Mm. Well, I guess Tarzan had the um, the technology first. If you watch Tarzan, you know the mm. when he's sliding down the trees. That yeah. was the first starting of the three D animation coming in, and then Treasure Planet. Just re- that was a perfect blend mm. of those the two 
art forms. I think Treasure Planet as well is a very underrated mm. Disney film, in my opinion. I can, Joseph no, Gordon I Levitt. Mm, Joseph Gordon Levitt. That was where my hatred of uh, and my defiance of um, sitting on a front row in a cinema started. I remember getting very angry with my mother because we came late. This was when you um, came and you picked your seat in cinemas, if you remember yeah. that. And um, <laughs> this was when the cinemas were open, uh, if you remember that. And um, we uh, and I remember going and sitting on the front row because there was no other seats and cricking my neck. And I thought, I will never, ever. And also, I, just like uh, Alvy Singer, Woody Allen in Annie Hall, when he's late, <laughs> five minutes late, that's another thing. And that's so when I first watched Annie Hall, I was like, yeah, I agree with you. Don't why why come in late into a movie? I got very angry with my sister because I was La late La to La David Copperfield. Were you late into La La Land? No, but she was. Oh, she, she was, was. waiting late into Rebel Without Cause. She was stands in the front. If that were me, and I was there, I'd be like, uh, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, Emma Stone, can you please move out of the way? I'm trying to watch Rebel Without Cause here. Yeah. Get out of the way. And, the, and he just that, stands up as well, and he's, he's head like, Hello. Cuts up. At least it's still the credits. It's still the Ryan, credits. Ryan, sit down. <laughs> Get down. I actually saw Rebel Without a Cause in a uh, in a Philadelphia cinema, and it is a beautiful print. Loved it. Uh -huh. Um, and then, however, I didn't go and then fly in the Griffith Auditorium. Yeah, well. So, above the others, let's have this conversation now. What makes Howl's Moving Castle your favourite of the studios you've been on? It's a very, very me answer. You've got a thing for Howl, haven't you? No, no. I, well, yeah. But it, it's actually a mixture of a few things. So if we get into the very me part of it, uh, the love story, I'm big into love stories. I'm one of these weirdos. The commentary on the Iraq war. Yes, that is oh, really? literally where I was about to go, is the anti-imperialist, anti-war, anti-Iraq, anti-Bush and Cheney, um, anti-America, really. Mm -hmm. All the undertones of this film, um, where it's literally just saying, they're lying to you, <laughs> this is all propaganda, this war isn't real, which, is, which at the time, obviously with the Iraq and Afghanistan war, was a big thing, you know. It's we were classic. being sick. Um, oh, sorry, go on. They were, you know, the Ameri especially America, they were being told that this war was unnecessary, that there were weapons in Iraq that we needed to get, blah, blah, blah. and it also turned out to be bullshit, which it just like the war in Howells, Moving Castle, mm -hmm. is absolute bullshit. And um, Madame oh, yeah. Solomon and the king easily end the war once he returns, mm -hmm. just to pr just proves that it was unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's classic Twilight Zone stuff. You know, Rod Serling couldn't write the political scripts that he always wanted to do in 1961. So he had to make a sci-fi show and he had to make it aliens instead of uh, minorities and all that sort of thing. And it's very similar here. You know, I mean, there were more political... Uh, it's a bit of an obtuse comment because uh, there were lots of political movies at the time. But that sort of um, not necessarily thinly veiled commentary into a medium uh, of metaphor and because um, it is purely a, a metaphorical uh, medium in this film. Mm. YouTube comments. Nine-year-old me knew how was fine and 17-year-old me still agrees. Agreed. A lot more thirst tweet, uh, thirst comments uh, that I was expecting. <laughs> Hal never fails to charm me. I love him forever and always. Honestly, how having a mental breakdown because his hair changed colour and he's not pretty anymore is such a mood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we all fall in love with Howl since the first encounter, but we grow to admire Sophie through her struggles. She is, in my I... opinion, one of the strongest female characters ever. Yeah, I love Sophie, actually. I really like that um, a lot of people's criticism of the film is that Sophie's curse is broken by love but I don't mm. I don't think it's necessarily about her love for Howell a lot of the time it's more her becoming more confident and sure of herself and knowing who she is yeah it's a bit circumstantial uh, the love elements um, it's kind of just like 
it, it is, I think, obviously, this film is anti-war. That is literally why this film was made. Mm. The love story is, it's kind of in the forefront, but also in the background at the same time. In oh, yeah. that, you're, it's very obvious that, especially Sophie loves him. It's mm. so obvious. And you can't, there is a way I think you watch this film where you're like, oh, she clearly loves him more than he loves her. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's yeah. true. It never really crossed my mind because of the whole beauty and the beast of it all in that she's this old woman. And that's one of my changes. Maybe I'm, I, I, I may be stupid. It was the first watch. I've, if I've missed something, slap me down straight away. But her changing from young to old, scene to scene, I don't know whether it was an artistic choice to show the truth underneath. I don't know. Is that part of the curse or, you know, explain that I think that it was to literally... Me? So the moments of the film where Sophie is becoming more sure of herself, she becomes to revert back to her old self. Right. So okay. Especially, which um, I saw. So one of the um, the videos I watched um, commented. Cause sometimes I do like to watch like videos talking about the films before, I, um, just because like sometimes it like really blows your mind some of the stuff that people say. Someone said um, compared *Howl's Moving Castle* and the love story in it to the love story in *Brief Encounter*. Mm. and the scene where she mm. goes oh and you know he's talking really passionately and she goes oh you look like a little boy just then and they're clearly falling in love well the bit where sophie is in front of uh, madame Sullivan and she's talking about how and how amazing and she suddenly looks so young i'm just like oh, I oh my she, language. <laughs> so passionate and she's so in love mm. and it's so nice to see and she's young again she's young she's full of this bigger and she she wasn't living before that's why it transformed into an old woman she was old in her nature and how she was the younger she feels and you know suddenly she's got this freedom and she's not constrained by the job and her stepmother and blah, blah, blah. she can finally be a real person you can see her personality so the younger she gets and then one of the bits that really broke my heart in this film is when um how changes the castle's interior and it mirrors the hat shop. Mm. And he says, oh, here's your room. And she goes, <laughs> ah, sick. And she turns into an old woman again. Mm. And it's that, um, that, that um, you know, it's, it, it, it's like a sad moment when someone thinks something of you that you didn't think you were anymore. And it kind of makes you revert back into this, into your old self. And she, it's very introspective and, she loses this self-confidence that she she'd been building for the majority of the film you know as an old woman it was very she was very confident she was happy being you know she didn't feel like she had to try and that's why she becomes younger because she no longer had to try to be something she wasn't she could just be herself so when then Hal puts her back in that box room and in, back into the box that she fitted initially that's why she gets old again because she it's, oh, I don't, I can't quite... No, I get it, yeah, no, perfect. Well, she says it, doesn't she? Perfect for a housekeeper. And immediately she's like, oh, I thought I was more than a cleaner here, uh, but I'm clearly not. Yeah, um, it's very, it's so sad. It's very, like, unrequited. Just, well, you know, like, this whole like, concept of unrequited love, even though it is required and they are in love, it's very much um, just that breakdown of her confidence and who she is person, so she becomes old again. So the, in switching between the scenes, just it, it depends on her confidence. So like the youngest she looks at one point is the Madame Suleiman scene. And then when they're in the um, the fields mm -hmm. as well, just her and how. Okay. Yeah, that works great. I like that. All the girls are talking about their childhood crush on Howell. But as a guy, I have to say, ma'am, Sophie was cute, especially when her hair, hair turned starlight. And I was short, but not too short at the end. I've been crushing on short-haired girls ever since. I'm tempted to read the books as the movie is based on them. Have you read the books? I have not, but I think I would like them. They're, they're apparently quite different to the film. Yeah. As with is a it... lot of Miyazaki's um, adaptations, he's done quite a few adaptations. Mm. Um, he did uh, the, uh, an adaptation of The Borrows, I really like the secret word of Arietti. I liked that film. Mm. Is, it, is it one of those uh, where it's the film is the first three books or whatever or is this the first book full stop i have no idea i haven't read you know, them but i, I think it's um I, I just think it's like a loose 
loose adaptation. Ad loose adaptation of the films in that it's got the characters, but they might ne not necessarily. I'm pretty sure in the books, um, Sophie and Hal's relationship is a lot more um, bantery, a lot more like cutting, hmm. almost mean jabs and that kind of thing. But as I say, I haven't read them. Would like to read them. Hmm. Well, let's get into the body of the oh, film. Oh, wait, can I just say some of the um, the one-star reviews from Google? <laughs> yes, you can. Um, I watched this movie in class with my friend. We both got so bored that I brought cushions from the library corner to my table and she sat near, so we tried to sleep. But the rest of the class made lots of noises, so it was impossible to sleep. I like the animation, even though I'm not a fan of anime. I don't recommend this movie to anyone who likes powerful characters. Who's who? Sorry, who is picking a movie? Whose hatred of movies is based on them being powerful characters? It's like, mm, I don't like this one. There's too. They're not passive enough for me. <laughs> um, I just hate the anime. I was unfortunately forced to watch it all. It would also look better as a live action film. The drawing is also bad. I don't recommend it to anybody unless you're an anime tool. What I don't get about the, all these bloody live action remakes is that they're in fantastical worlds. So they're having to do animation of a form anyway. It's just CGI. I mean, Lion King's the biggest example. I mean, that's just animated in a different way. Don't it? It's not even worth talking about. But Aladdin, like uh, Never Had a Friend Like Me, is just fully, fully animated. It's the just a different only, form of animation. The only real life adaptation that I liked that Disney have done. It's Cinderella. Cinderella. Yeah, great, great film. And it sort because of built it up a thing of, let's do this again. It isn't, which is very interesting because then they just said, we'll just remake the exact same film just mm. with real people. Whereas Cinderella was its own take on the story of Cinderella. So this is what I don't understand. And also they've turned to adapting the more successful movies. Rewatching Cinderella, Cinderella, proper Cinderella, it's what 70 minutes it's very thin and anim animated beautifully beautiful mm. songs mm -hmm. but you know it's a, you know it's, it's you know there's not much there and so adapting it yeah you can start asking questions bringing things in but beauty and the beast is a, is a perfect perfect it's perfect the Renaissance film. Era. it doesn't it doesn't it didn't need a and especially not with emma watson in it don't, <laughs> i don't even want to talk about it but cinderella was a great adaptation yes it was ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。ま。
the studio. I'm not going to tag the director. I'm not going to tag the actors in it. But people do, and it's so weird. Well, this is the thing, then, because I'm hoping to go into the acting industry and the, in the directing industry and the writing industry. And so eventually I'm looking for a job. And I write reviews, and my prom review was... Actually, it was pretty. It was a lot better than some of the reviews it ended up getting. Um, but my mum was like, you need to stop. You can't be harsh in your reviews because what if someday he wants to hire you for a job? And I said, well, I'm not going to, you know. And then it's that question of, you know, are you going to just review movies you like? And I guess reviewing is very different from uh, just comments. Um but, yeah, but uh, even still, I read some reviews and I'm just like, this is just straight up nasty. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's not even necessarily comments on, like, I, I, I've read reviews where it's like they comment on, like, what the actress looks like. And it's yeah, like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Your reviews aren't like that. No. It's, I, some, I think some people review films and they're just mm. like, I ended, up, I ended up talking about Trainwreck because uh, I was doing an article on Judd Apatow. I don't know if it's come out yet. Um, by the time that this is released, uh, look on Blogger, everybody, and um, and and I, I fucking hate Trainwreck, and it's probably the, been the most vitriolic I've been in a thing. Mm. And even then, I caught myself. I said, I don't like being this negative, but this film really is that bad because every I time I, I mean, I'm not an Amy Schumer fan. She's not funny in the slightest. And the people, but that people say, I saw, I saw comments on Trainwreck, and it was just like Amy Schumer's ugly. <laughs> Just it's not relevant, it. though, is and it? And also, it removed. And then, well, we saw it with Ghostbusters. I mean, this is a wonderful larger conversation. But those idiots who were like, "Why is it fucking women?" You know, you know, who's this black girl? That sort of stuff then removes. Then they gives people uh, the stars and the writers and the directors the capability to say everybody hates the film because it's because they're sexist and racist. So that's a, that's a, a big factor for sexist yeah. and racist people but then it gave them carte blanche I mean um, Elizabeth Banks did it with Charlie's Angels she was just like why aren't men coming to watch Charlie's Angels and it was a box office flop because it was a bad film not because yeah I think um, because the first I Charlie's Angels think, was massive sorry I do think that there is a problem with um, men not wanting to see films where they're not mm -hmm. attracted to the women in it though Okay, um, yeah, yeah. That, that's a larger conversation in itself, though. Um, but the stars of the new Charlie's Angels movies, very attractive women. But Kristen, um, Kristen Stewart, she looks like a lesbian, though, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's, a, there's, yeah. A, there's a whole concept that men um, don't respect women they, they're not attracted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which, you know, obviously I'm, I'm not going to say that, you know, a lot that every single man in the world is doesn't respect women they're not attracted to but it, oh, i do factor, think it is yeah, yeah. it is a large problem in society mm. men are only nice to the women that they want to sleep with and yeah. that the women that they don't want to sleep with take a leave or they treat they treat those women like men which is a yeah. weird thing it's the whole idea that they treat them like men and sometimes i don't want to be treated like one of the boys because at the end of the day, I'm not a boy, and therefore I don't think it's right to, you know, mm. talk to me like I'm just a man just because you can't, you, not you personally, obviously. No, yeah. uh, you don't sexualize you. Yeah. 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 So because they don't want to have sex with me, I'm so desexualized that they'd see me as the opposite gender mm. because yeah. that's the only way that their brain can um, categorize me. An interesting social tangent which i enjoyed having sorry which in, yeah don't apologize it's great i love i love these sort of conversations but um which leads us into you, you know you read the wikipedia you look at multiple articles people talk about this as a distinct feminist text now um you've got a trio of, of <laughs> women going down on each other uh behind you uh, as well as uh, as well as being a uh, feminist um, in regards to media, sp not specifically, but you have a very key concept um, in your head, um, an interest of feminist depictions in the media. Do you want to unpack that? It'd be funny if you said no, and you're like, no, let's move <laughs> no, on. No, I'm all right, actually. Yeah, let's move on. Um, yeah, one of the things I specifically like about this film is that Hal falls in love with Sophie 
regardless of the fact that she looks like a 90 year old woman a lot of the time. Mm. It turns into Harold and Maud, it's delightful. He, he falls in love with her as a person, which is, as I was saying earlier, you know, the whole idea that because someone, you know, they're, and Hal isn't a nice person at the beginning of the film. He isn't, he is literally categorically eats people's hearts which I think is actually the whole joke that he is a heartbreaker and he's a bit of a mm. um bit of a fuck boy if you were he, yeah he like, you know he what I mean he gets angry when he gets when he gets dumped he goes like insane mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. and when he doesn't look how he wants to look mm. um, which actually is a very interesting point in this film is that Howell is the more um egotistical he's the more focused on how he looks which is actually something I would say is stereotypically I just sorry I just made air quotations for anyone listening um stereotypically feminine mm. in that women are depicted as being a bit um shallow and caring about their looks and whereas Sophie doesn't really care how she looks other than the fact she looks like a 90 year old woman but she she and if she does care about how she looks she doesn't really do much to change it in the especially as the film goes on she becomes a lot more comfortable with herself and how she looks I think it's most of the physical losses that she gets from becoming old. It's not the um, uh, not the appearance physical. It's yeah, because she even says that she yeah. fits her personality now and she fits her clothes yeah. better. <laughs> this is a funny line, and um, you know, it's that sort of thing of oh, I, I really want to run and all that freedom of mm. uh, that. It's it's that, and also it's the thing of like you were saying with that shoebox um, hat keeper's room she's in. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. She spent all her life uh, by choice or through means in that shoe, in that uh, making hats, um, not running free, not doing a Julie Andrews and singing Sound of Music. And then suddenly that's taken away from her. And that's the time that she needs yeah, or wants to climb the mountains. So interesting that Sophie actually finds freedom in looking undesirable. Hmm. When she looks desirable, or not even desirable, but when she is young, she is actually nearly sexually assaulted, which is yeah. a very interesting take on, um, I would say, American army men. I don't want to get too deep into it, but um, about American officers and how um, uh, a large percentage of women in Amer- the army in, in any country um, mm. are physically assaulted by other officers. Mm. Um and Howell saves her, but he doesn't even just save her. He just, he's just there. He's just very opportunistic. So regardless of whether Howell, and that's a very interesting comment as well about how, oh, if it was Howell, he'd have eaten your heart from Letty. But he didn't because it's all about propaganda and how the government have made you think these things. Because Howell's, he's a bad person in terms of, he's a bit of a dickhead, yeah. but he's not, <laughs> but he's not he's evil. Not a but, uh, um, and all yeah, they have she... left after they've been dismissed is the pomp and rigour of the army and they go hoo, 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 and they walk away uh, with as, as army-like mm. as they possibly could. But she finds her freedom mm. in being undesirable, which I love. I love I love that this film isn't about, I don't know, it's not about becoming beautiful because yeah. she just reverts back to how she looked before just with different hair. You know, she always was beautiful and she finds beauty within herself. Um, I think that I love the, all the women characters in this film have, I mean, Madame Suleiman quite literally is Dick Cheney um, in that um, the king is a figurehead and she is the one who controls everything. She is powerful. She has all this power. Christine Bell, of course, goes on to play Dick Cheney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just realised that because oh, I was yeah. thinking was Blythe Danner in Vice I can't remember that rings a bell and I was like no 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 she was just an old woman in Patrick Melrose which was great but by the way Go she on. is you know it's the whole concept that George W Bush was a figurehead and that Dick Cheney yeah. was the one who actually run the show mm. the same as the king is a figurehead and um Madame Solomon is the one who runs the show but she's a woman she has this she has an enormous amount of power she mm. is you see that she's a very powerful witch as well, you know. Very, uh, it's that's sorry. Right. <laughs> very Wizard of Ozzy uh, with the globe and the, um, mm. how could, I mean, there's a very close line to line of um, 
how could uh, oh what's the what's the line when she's melting how could a girl like you destroy my beautiful wickedness mm. the line that um, led to Joan Waters entire career because it was like oh, I love the witch she's so she, you know basically the the first drag queen not a drag queen at all because Margaret Hamilton was a woman uh, playing a witch uh, but it well, was no, like some sort of drag queens fierce, are women some drag queens are women. This is true. This is true indeed. Um, but not a drag queen in the sense of she was playing a role. Mm. And, uh, and there was none of the drag persona. But that sort of fierce, villainess character. Uh, and he was like, oh, yeah, I could make a career out of that. And he did. I love John Waters. I think I think the women in this film are very multidimensional as well. Like the, mm. the Witch of the Waste. Oh, she's evil. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no, she's not evil. Mm. Oh, but oh, okay. And she, I think this film is very interesting with how it depicts elderly women as well. Mm, yeah. As powerful women, um, it's depictions of plus size women who. Yeah. It, that's very interesting, regardless of whether it's good depiction of plus size women or not. Mm. It's, in, it's interesting. I mean, obviously, the plus size woman in this film is actually a villain. But at the same time, she does go through this redemption arc and she doesn't she doesn't necessarily like, you know, at the end, she's still, quote unquote, fat. Yeah, I would say. Um, but she's a lot more lovable, which is very interesting. <laughs> she's, that, um, bulbous, she's basically she turns into Dan Aykroyd in Nothing But Trouble. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, mm. She's got like a penis nose. Not that um, she's uh, quite cute. I think she's quite cute in the yeah. end, and she just loves Howl. And it's this whole. I suppose you there's the depiction that he stole her heart and that he yeah. broke her heart, um, and that's what made her such a villain. Mm-hmm. But then she also decides to be good at the end. And Sophie's the one who like asks her to let go of Calcifer's and and of Howl's heart, and she's like, let go and and Say Billy Crystal. <laughs> Yes, I think actually you, I was hoping you would watch the English version the full way through just because I think the, as Gene Simmons is hilarious in this film. Some of the um, deliveries of the, just um, specific, one of the ones I loved as well is when um, she meets the Tana Pageant and she's like, mm, you're my least favourite vegetable. Like the way she um, she says some of those lines is really, really funny. I think she's brilliant in this I, I, I did keep flicking. It was a weird one. I kept flicking back and forth and back and forth because I was like, oh, I love all these actors. I, I, I do want to listen to the English version. But I thought you were going to be, because that's the common opinion, isn't it? It subs over, mm-hmm. uh, dubs over subs. And I thought, oh, she's going to be, I'm Mrs. Uh, I'm Mrs. Ghibli. Uh, don't come for me. Because um, I met people in Philadelphia. Uh, when I studied there, and they were hardcore Miyazaki fans, and they nearly got me to do watch the uh, noir one, the detective one, like his first movie. Yeah, I've heard that's really good. I haven't um, seen it myself. We watched ten minutes. I enjoyed the first ten minutes of it, but I went elsewhere <laughs> because it just wasn't grabbing me really. I think Howl's Moving Castle. Um, I know you say it falters in the second half. I think. Um, I don't, I can't put a pin on it really, because as much as I, because I really do, I'm loving this conversation uh, with you, because it is enriching it in so, so Mm. many ways for me. However, I'm loving this conversation. I'm enjoying it. I hope our listeners are too. But I don't know if it's attracting me to watch it again. Mm. I don't, I don't. What what, what are your main, main hang ups on it then? I think. I just, I thought maybe it's because I, I, I went, well, no, that's, I couldn't have watched it any more than I was watching it. It wasn't like I was on my phone or something. I, the plot contrivances in the second half, particularly Prince Turnip, I mean, what, what's happening there? Well, he's the prince who was missing. No, I know. I oh. get it. But I was like, oh, really? Oh, oh. But then also I liked that that sort of, was a comment on contrivance because then he's like, "I'm I, true love saved me. I'm gonna marry this woman," and then we, and then he keeps talking to Lauren Bacall in the back in the background, and he's like, "No, we we want we're with Hal and Sophie," and he's just like, "Ma ma ma" in the background, <laughs> and it's sort of like a comment on, "Oh, were we supposed to, in another world? There's another two hours. There's a two hour yeah. Film everyone has their own turnips plot, perspective." Yeah. 
uh, or it's from Turn Into it's, Perspective. It, which is quite real, realistic to real life in that everyone's the main character of their own story. I'm sure his actual story was interesting, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, mm, yeah, that's Sophie and Hal, though. They're so cute. <laughs> Sad little scarecrow boy. And like, I love the dog. I love the dog. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just I love no, the no. little dog, the little wheezing dog, and how at the end he is like, oh, look, look, look. <laughs> Who's your favourite so Weezer? Cute. Is it this wheezing dog or is it Weezer in Toy Story 2? Oh no, this little wheezy dog. I love him so much. And just the fact that he actually dog. is then supposed to have probably been spying on them the entire time. Mm. Um, for her, but chooses at the end to be like, so yeah, this <laughs> the, I love these guys. I'm going to stick with these guys. Well, that's another Wizard of Oz element. I was really getting big Wizard of Oz vibes with the sort of... Yes, well, Miyazaki um, takes a lot of elements. Something I found really interesting, mm. this is a Japanese film, but not set in Japan, really. It's clearly not set in Japan. It has a mm. lot of, um, I'd say, like, Swiss elements to it. Well... It's also from the novel German incorporating, well. yeah, incorporating Europe, Europe themes in the novel, uh, the black um, zone or what, whatever you want to call it, is um, modern day Wales. And that's his happy place, um, which uh, I don't doesn't make any sense, because why would modern day Wales be anybody's happy place? <laughs> well, I suppose the book is written by a Welsh author, so yeah. it's set in Wales. Mm. I think Wales is quite beautiful in a lot of ways. Yeah, in some. Um, in the, the pits that haven't been touched much by people, admittedly. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I just think um, the little wheezy dog is so cute. I, I, in fact, I, I do like all the characters, especially the little... Fa- I, I'm, I'm a big lover of found family stories. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good... And Calcifer, the fact that he constantly grumbles about how much he hates Hal and how much he hates being cooking people's food and he wants them to have all their bacon burnt in actual fact he's like mm, yeah i miss you guys i don't want to stay at the end and he chooses to stay that was good yeah. um and him eating the shells was delightful the eggshells yeah. um, billy crystal was brilliant i think billy crystal so absolute legend <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was so good in this film he was so good at this. Billy story. Crystal, underrated voice performer. I I will go to my grave. The the best Pixar movie, and it's not even that. I don't. Is it that controversial in opinion? Monsters Inc. is without a doubt the best Pixar movie. Up there. I guess. Yeah. I guess. Well, it's my personal favorite, and 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 at, so often people make their favorites. Um, the best ever. Uh, go on then. I used to fancy um, Mike Wazowski actually. Oh. <laughs> I think, um, I, think I usually I fancy... can get behind a lot of your crushes. I think I usually fancy the concept of a person more than the how they look. So I was a big, uh, when I fancied cartoons, I fancied the cartoon's voice, not oh, yeah. how so... they looked. So does Harry really, really, really do it, do it for I you? I still haven't seen when Harry was all I know I'd love it, but it's a, it's a Casablanca set. Um, for any listeners at home, um, I notoriously didn't watch Casablanca for about two years of knowing Tom, specifically because he told me to watch it. That is the level of stubborn that I oh, am. And every time I talk to Harry about uh, about Harry Met Sally, um, I'm always like, yeah, but Tom always tells me to watch it. But Becky loves it, and how how you and Becky have an incredible batting average. There is, I don't think there's a single movie where, like, that's become a bit of a trio of, uh, what is it, About Time, 500 Days of Summer, Easy A, Gone Girl that's going to come out soon. You, you've got, and she loves When I Met Sally and was on our When I Met Sally episode. No, I know I'd like it. It's I knew I'd like, like Casablanca. It. it is just because you like it and tell me to watch it. I'm, I don't know what it is about you, Tom, but you and you make me very stupid about films. And Will makes me very stubborn about Ludo. I've ne- I'm not oh a competitive person until playing um, Frustration or Ludo uh, mm. with Will. I think it's a good job. We always play it online. And uh, I think it's a good job we play it online because I think if we played it in real person, you might punch him. 
I don't know what it is, guys, about about Will. It's the game. Uh, it's Ludo. Maybe I, I mean, and he's it, so it's... smug about it as well. It's it's, so it's it's games of luck. With the games of skill, if you lose at a game of skill, you can you're annoyed, but you go, okay, I'll concede that I'm the worst player. Yeah, I'm not. I'm you know I'm not a sore loser. If I lose, I lose. I'm like fine. But games of luck, you're like, oh, it's you. You cast a <laughs> spell. <laughs> I just hate him when we play it. I literally have nearly like I've said some horrible insults to Will, and then afterwards I've been fine with him and gone. You do. It's just a game. It like, does yeah, bring fine. out the worst <laughs> in people. It's a marvelous game. This is the longest we've ever gone without getting to any of the categories. Let's get into them. Let's do some blitzing. Right. Uh, Ten minute stretch. Let's cut nominations. Is in your head. Right now, what jumped to mind is your favourite ten-minute stretch? Oh, I've got mm. old lady starting up, cleaning and laundry, uh, meeting Blight Stanner. Um, I think okay. I think mine is um, when she goes back in time to see Howl's origin story. Mm. Okay, that's nice. Um, Find me in the future. <laughs> And then when he sees her in the first the first time they introduce themselves to each other, he goes, Ah, oh, there you are, darling. I've been looking for you. Mm. Mm. It's, 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 it's we've gone we've gone full tenant. Um I'm the protagonist. Bad, 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 bad choice. Um I love the child's beard. Very delightful. Markle, yeah. Very delightful. I also uh, um I also like the um when Sophie and the Witch of the Ways get to the castle, just going up the stairs, oh, Sophie's that's carrying the dog. Uh, the the animation of 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 uh, Lauren, I keep saying Lauren Bacall. The animation of Lauren Bacall going up those steps is sensational. Um it's a bit of a quick Oscar travesty this year because it's not nominated for much else, and I don't know if we would nominate it for much. Oh, actually. They're both together. So it's, uh, it's nomination is for uh, Best Animated Film. It loses to Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Weir Rabbit. Yeah, no, sorry. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> and, and then Corpse Bride is also nominated. I'm sorry. Are you having a laugh? But also at the same time, Miyazaki would never have accepted. Oh, is he one of the, is he a George C. Scott? <laughs> no, he never wanted to go to America because he really hated the Iraq war. Ah, he was right. a he that's one of he would never have accepted an oscar mm. um because of his hatred of america basically mm. um he he like you know he grew up in the you know japan hello japan was literally war torn and bombed hello and... japan <laughs> <laughs> but he grew up moving around a lot because of um not just war but also the effects of World War Two. Mm. Um, I'm trying to see here um, if any Ghibli have won Oscars. I th I'm sorry, you're telling me that 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 Wallace and Gromit <laughs> won. It's a good job. It's, it's a, a good job. Film. Will's not here because he would <laughs> have you over the don't, coals. Don't get me wrong. I like it. I'm not saying I don't like Curse of the Were Rabbit. But really, but like, really, it if we're going on how it looks, best animated feature feature film, blah blah blah. Howl's is Howl is better. Howl's Moving Castle is better. Like, Princess Minoke in nineteen ninety seven. Oh, this is another thing as well. Um, the Academy Awards didn't have best animated film until I think it was Shrek. Like Shrek was what? like. It was like the same Shrek and something else came out in the same year, and they were like, "This needs to be a thing." So the first Ghibli um, nominated. Best animated movie at the Academy Awards is 2003 for Spirited Away, which it wins. Yeah. How's Moving Castle nominated? Ponyo, not nominated for best. Shame. I loved best Ponyo. animated feature. As uh, we said before, Ponyo was my introduction. The Wind Rises got nominated, uh, mm -hmm. and that's it. So he's, I'm shocked. Mm. Spirited Away was a big. I think that's the one I watched as a kid. I I I, I watched a couple as a kid. I think it was either Spirited Away or My Neighbor. I do like Spirited Away. And I just I thought I just them a lot thought as a kid, but I can't with Howl's. Seen as you hadn't seen it, and I thought it's got Billy Crystal in. It's got James <laughs> Simmons in. 
put Christian Bale in. I just thought that it'd be a absolute. Well, the English dub does. I thought it'd be a. And I like it. and I did very much enjoy myself. And I and I am glad that I have lost my Ghibli virginity. My Ghibli Um Best single minute. Anything jumping to mind? I think the stairs that you were just talking about, so incredibly animated. I think that's literally like seven minutes, though. Yeah. I think best single minute. Um, I think I do like the ending, mm. especially yeah. the ending when we're talking like the castle's back up and running mm. and we see them on the balcony and she's just, they just look very happy. I don't know, I'm sucker for a happy ending. It is a good mm. ending. As it's commented on in this, ah, oh, happy ending. Um, best line. Anything by Calcifer. He's hilarious in this film. Um, okay, let's see. Do I have any? Sometimes I check my phone for these. To see. I have here. I feel terrible. Like there's a weight on my chest. A heart's heavy burden. Oh. Isn't that just... It's just darling. Uh, very funny. You're wearing that hat after all the magic I used to make your dress pretty. <laughs> Another good example of him being a bit of a dick. Um, He's great, though. Oh, oh Calcifer's, here's another curse for you, may all your bacon burn. <laughs> a heart's a heavy burden. I think it's such a, it is such a sweet film. Their love story mm. is actually very, very sweet, very, quite innocent, actually. Oh, yeah, uh, chaste. Yeah, oh, of course you know. it's chaste. We don't want a graphic sex scene. <laughs> but... Uh, compared to like what we're told of Howell, mm. oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you'd expect him to be a lot more. I don't know, a lot more like pushy, but he isn't. He's very, um, I, it's childish. Yeah, which it's makes sense. Love, it's love. Mm. Um, which leads us into what's the change? She does all that cleaning, then she then she clears the ash. Oh, the yes. ash is going to oh go over the God. floors. What Come the on. Yeah, I always think that. <laughs> sort it out. I want the crying to be more real. When uh, when Sophie goes and cries, um, and then Turp, I think it's Turpin that comes to find her. Um, it's too overwrought and it's too overblown. And I think if it was more subtle and just a couple of tears and a bit softer, I but think it would really hit get home. To have Women don't get to have angry tears very often. Though. Women have to be beautiful when they cry. And in this film, she isn't beautiful when she cries. I'll let you know, Katrina, that one of my favourite movies of all time is Broadcast News. And in that... Not you personally. <sighs> Stop taking all my everything personally. I'm just saying women don't often get these... I, this is true. I'm absolutely god-awful when I cry. I'm a real ugly crier. Real disgusting. Really horrible. I don't know. It's nice. But also, I guess... Another, and when I met Sally, not that you'd know. Well, 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 well. <laughs> but also, anyway. did you watch her crying scene in Japanese or in English? In Japanese. <laughs> but the animation as well. Why, does I, Emily I like Mortimer it. do some subtle work? No, no, no. It's just, I like it. I like angry tears. I'm a big Oh, I like angry tears. I just think at that moment... Getting to have these explosive, hysterical mm. fits of tears. Oh, I mean, Nicole Kidman in the car, in Big Little... I mean, Big Little Lies, everybody had a moment where they were like... Meryl <laughs> Streep. So Meryl Streep just screaming. That's oh, yeah. the funniest thing that ever happened in Big Little Lies. It was. Shame about the second season. Um... Do, 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 do. Yeah, no. We've talked what else about would you things. change? We've talked about them. We've talked about maybe a bit, maybe a bit long, maybe a bit, maybe a bit, maybe a bit long. I think that's just because I, I, I wasn't invested in the narrative. But I don't. It's so interesting, though, isn't it? Like two mm. people can watch a film. I, I, I liked it. I liked the back and forth. I'm a big, big time travel fan as well. So I liked the time <laughs> travel. Experience. I liked the fact that you know, um, the kids in the castle that are like clearly Solomon's apprentices all kind of look like Howell like the haircuts and things like that and it's this whole idea that um, he could have been indoctrinated but he chose not to be and the wayward soul 
you know, uh, there's, a, there's the line when he's looking at all the other wizards when they're like flying around and he's like, oh, after the war, they'll forget that they were ever even human. And it's this whole like commentary on how, especially in America, veterans are just absolutely left behind mm-hmm. after they're back from war and they've got all this PTSD and mental health issues. They're just kind of left to their own devices to do whatever they want. And in a lot of ways, do they see themselves as human after they've been in conflict and they've done all these horrible, horrific things? Because the, you know, the suicide rates for veterans is really high. I mean, then you look at that today, and it's bad, and you can't yeah, even, no, and still... you can't. No, that's what I'm. I'm saying. In, I'm saying, it's bad now. Can you even imagine after World War Two, where there's not even yeah, a fucking some of the thing that people called PTSD? It's just called the shell shapes. shock. Yeah, it's shell just, shock. Oh, is 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 ever yeah. It's just, it, it, it affected him. Yeah, it affect, of course it affected him. How do you it's, go it's, back it's, to it's normal life when murder's been... Yeah. After the war. How, you, uh, you, if, you, if you literally killed people, there is... N- and it's not because you're into that kind of thing. It's literally just because of necessity or the government says it's necessity. Mm-hmm. You're told that this war you're in is necessary. Yeah, wow, God, and you're killing innocent people? Oh, God, no, I can't even imagine. And that's why I like this film, because it's not just, oh, that's, you know, like Disney, sometimes, actually, Disney's a little bit surface level. Oh, love yeah. Disney. But Miyazaki's films, especially, always seem to have these, it's like, here's the story, here's what it's really about. Hmm. Very nice. And it's this anti-war, anti-imperialism, anti-American, pro- people pro love story mm. which leads us into a few fun facts although the film was not released in the united kingdom until the 23rd of september 2005 director hayao miyazaki actually personally traveled to england in the summer of 2004 to give a private showing to diana Wynne jones who wrote the novels there's no talk about whether she liked it or not i tried to find it i'm assuming maybe <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming maybe. Uh, in the novel, uh, as I said, the Black Dot is Wales and Christian Bale is Welsh. So his accent is so weird, though. <laughs> this is true. How all over the his accent is literally everywhere. Mm. Uh, in the novel, Sophie actually learns she also has magical powers, and she is the one that defeats the Witch of the Waste along with her own fire demon. Yes, because so in the film. I didn't realise in this until I did some research. Her mother isn't her mother. It's her stepmother. And her dad and her mother died. Mm. And then her stepmother took over when her dad died. That's So that's why um, she doesn't look like her mum. Also, that's a very... That's a really good scene, I think, when her the mother gets back in the car and she's like take can I go and um, take me to my husband or can I see my husband now and it's this whole idea that um anyone would sell you out if it wasn't if you know if it's, it's if like it's, I Tonya I Tonya when she finds the recording device in her mother's coat oh, good film I Tonya uh there aren't any taglines <laughs> I tried to find taglines there aren't any and my only question is uh best Ghibli but we've touched on it which brings us to the end of our lovely discussion of Howl's Moving Castle. Katrina, any final thoughts on, on Miyazaki, Howl's Moving Castle? Probably Studio Ghibli. I, I, I don't know if we'll return to this I, well. I think that um, I really like that the castle itself is a character. Mm. Not from Calcifer, but it's such a like imposing presence. Yeah. It has Thank this, you. like... That incredible opening shot of it coming through oh, the fog. Oh, in the fog, yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, this entire film is beautiful. I think that good most film. of Studio Ghibli's films, you know, it, the key it, it is detail. It's so, everything's so detailed. It's so, so clearly a labour of love. Um, you know, this film is, I don't know, it's just very beautiful. And I think that the message it's trying to bring across is something that a lot of people should pay attention to. Um, Sneaks up on you, old wars. <laughs> They always sneak up on you until, mm. and it's only when, uh, I mean, just always. It's actually up. a very, a very left wing film. Very, very yeah. left wing. Very leftist. Very, and you know, also anything that's anti America to me is just funny. 
because America's the centre of the world and until it isn't. Yeah, that's very true. Um, which leads us to the end of Carl's Moving Castle. Uh, Katrina, it's been a pleasure. Uh, Origato. Origato. <laughs> <laughs> Ba 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 